All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how to basically use uh, After Effects for your um, your production when you are working in stop motion animation. Uh, so the first thing you need to be aware of is I'm on a Macintosh. I'm using uh, an iMac, uh, old school iMac, 10.6.8 on here. Um, you hear our cat mitten she wants to eat, but she's not eating right now. No, I'm giving you a tutorial. So um, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up After Effects. I'm using CS5, the latest version right now is CX6. I um, also have CS3 on here. I love CS3, I actually love After Effects 6.5, which is before the CS series, which is amazing. Um, there's a lot of plugins that you can actually use back in the old days that you can't use now. So it's good to have these older copies of After Effects. I have legitimate copies of plugins on CS3 that just will not work with CS4, or CS5, or CS6 um, that you just want to kind of keep around and use uh, for your production. It makes things a little faster sometimes, makes them easier, but regardless. Anyway, um, the first thing you're going to notice, of course, is the, the window opens up with all your panels. I'm going to go to File, Import, import file and the hotkey for that is Apple I all right and uh, I'm already actually at the spot because I've been doing these tutorials a couple times already but here we go to uh, your finder and your import file window um, you're gonna go to wherever your files are mine's under project folder fly one and uh, my first file is of course 100 point JPEG now I'm gonna import the whole sequence so to do this you have to have JPEG sequence checked I do I'm gonna hit OK or open and you'll see over here in your project window that you have uh, the file listed in all the data and this is so freaking awesome um, because After Effects is basically like a Swiss Army knife you can bring in lots of different types of footage and then you can export them into whatever you want um, with the exception being H.264 seems to be a nightmare in some instances with After Effects uh, the old After Effects the new After Effects is a little bit a little bit better but there's a whole workaround and all this crazy stuff. But anyway, regardless, we have the file footage in the machine. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to control the frame rate. Uh, you'll see my pixel aspect ratio is pretty large and my uh, pixel size is, is set to one. My frame rate is at 30 frames per second and I have 52 frames in here with, a millions, of, with millions of colors. Now to change the size of this, I'm going to have to go down here, which is the interpolate footage button. I'm gonna click that. The interpolate footage window pops open, and you can do all sorts of stuff in here. You can do your color management, you can do uh, main options. Now, this is really important because sometimes you'll be working with cameras and footage and stuff that you need to mess with this footage. Don't worry about that right now, but just know that sometimes your director of photography will be like, oh, we're using CR2s and all this other stuff, and you'll have a completely different kind of input because the CR2 window will pop open and you'll have to do all this crazy stuff. We're not doing that. We're using JPEGs. Um, so for one, we're going to use this frame rate, 24 frames per second. In the industry, it would actually be 23.976 or 23.98, but we're not doing that. I'm doing 24 because I'm a rebel. Um, actually, it's just because uh, I'm just keeping it simple, you know. Um, the other thing is uh, you want to worry about your pixel squares or square pixels or uh, these other ones. Now, if you're in, in 1920 by 1080 footage to begin with, you will be at 1.33 pixels. If you're using DV footage, you'll be, of course, at 0.91 or 1.09, widescreen, blah, blah, blah. You know, you get it. For, for stop motion animation specifically, when you're bringing in JPEG sequences, you're gonna be at a true pixel, so one full pixel size, okay? You hit okay. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename my uh, footage. I'm gonna click on that and then hit enter. And then I'm gonna type in fly guy. Yeah, cause he's a fly guy, yeah. And uh, then I'm gonna make a composition. Now to make the composition, I take this footage, I drag it down to this little film icon and I let go. And voila, you have a, uh, a composition window. Now we should probably save this project. So to do that, of course, you hit File, Save, or Apple S. I'm gonna name this guy, uh, let's name it Fly Guy. Woo, Fly Guy, yeah. All right, and uh, we have the composition window here. We can actually rename the composition by hitting Enter and type in Fly Guy as well. And we'll hit Comp underneath behind that. Uh, it's a good idea to keep these things organized so you actually have little uh, folders down here. You can click on these and like type in footage. 
and you can drag your footage into here. You do the same thing with comps. We always put comps, not compositions. It's easier to read. And the reason for this is because when you're working with and literally like 20 to 100 different compositions or 20 to 100 different types of uh, footage, and I'm not joking here, you will literally fill this screen up on this side. This panel will get just bogged down and you won't be able to find anything as well. You want other people to work with you. Um, you're going to have to stay organized. Um, part of that is, you know, a lot of times what we do is we'll name the footage like our comps. We'll name it and I'll put my initials at the end like fly guy comp J I right. That's that's me. And then you can also do an underscore. You always do underscores between these things like version one like V1 or V2 or V3 or V200 because you just are driving yourself crazy. Now, if you're going to go up into like the 10s or the 20s, it's always good to put like a 0, 1 to start with. That's a good habit. Very rarely will you go to the 100s. So you can 0, 0, 1. Uh, I have uh, just because, you know, you're using multiples and you're doing all this crazy stuff. So, but for this specific point, I'm going to just do 0, 1. Just to be cool. Actually, let's, I forgot the V. Darn it. Here, let's see. You can always change this stuff. There we go. So we have Fly Guy Composition JI V1. That is me. That's what I'm working on. Now, here's the fun part. You have this huge file that you're working with. This thing is 3584 by 2016 at once, one pixel. This is a huge file. Uh, After Effects can handle it. Your machine could probably handle it. Uh, you could probably work in this a great deal and, and get away with a lot of stuff. Now, if you had 3D layers and lights and all this crazy stuff in here going on, you're probably not going to want to work at that huge pixel aspect ratio unless you're working on in TV and f or unless you're working in film. Now, if you're working in TV, you're most likely working in 1920 by 1080. That is the standard for HD TV in the United States. Um, and that's the standard worldwide eventually. Um, I'm pretty sure there's still like some NTSC and PAL people out there that aren't in HD. But uh, for us in the in the States, we use uh, 1920 by 1080. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go on to uh, how to fix this. So I don't want to work in this, this huge file size, this huge aspect ratio. I'm actually going to shrink this sucker down. To do this, I'm going to go to the composition. Whoops, sorry, you have to be in this window. See how this yellow, yellow line is? You have to be down in your sequence. So I'm down in my sequence. I'm going to go Composition, Composition Settings, or Apple K. And then uh, I have Fly Guy Comp JI version 01. And it has all this listing. Now I could go in here and change this to whatever I want. Now this is, this is where you want to pay attention. I'm not going to do that. I kind of fooled you there. I'm actually going to go and pre-compose this. Now to pre-compose it, you can go, of course, to... Um, your layers and go pre-compose. You have to select whatever object. So if we had like, um, let's say we had like a shape layer, we had all this other stuff down there, we could select whatever we want, cl click that, and then go to layers and then go to pre-compose, right? For me, I'm just gonna pre-compose the footage. Apple Shift C. And what this is, is it's making a composition before your composition. So it's preserving the footage at its actual size, its actual ratio, and so you can work with it. Um, and not be destructive to it. And you can always go back. So you can actually make multiple pre-comps and be like, oh, this didn't work at this stage. I need to fix this. So what we like to do as well is like we like to key in one pre-composition. Pre so it would be like a, a fly guy pre-comp, pre-comp roto or pre-comp green screen or pre-comp. So what I'm going to do right here is fly guy pre-comp, period. You know, just pre-comp. And... Uh, I can actually make a level as well. So I can be like uh, V1 or 001. This is very important because if you're going to do these pre comps, you need to know where your first comp is. A lot of people don't do this, especially in the industry. It gets really annoying. You get some guy that gives you his comp or some girl that gives you their comp, and, and you're sitting there going, Where's your first pre comp? You have to hunt. You spend hours doing this. And then the supervisor sitting over top of you or the producer sitting over top of you going, oh, well, why haven't you finished the work? And you have a hard time kind of ratting out somebody. I don't like to rat people out. I never do. But sometimes those guys will breathe down your neck and you'll be like, ah, you got to just wait. Um, but anyway, long story short, 
um, it turns out to be nasty after a while when uh, when people don't keep organized and you have to get on them. So first of all, Fly Guy Precomp 001. I'm going to move all this, all these settings to a new precomposition to the new composition it's going to make. And we can actually click this Open New Composition. So you can see, and of course, now we have something to compare to. So you'll see down here at the bottom, we'll have the image sequences. This is the 001. And then we got the Fly Guy Comp JI version 01, of course. And this one is going to be our main comp. And we can actually change that to main if we wanted. Um, but we're not, because we're just working in this. And I'm going to now reduce this to uh, 1920 by 1080. Now, remember what I was saying, the reason for this is so that we can preserve the aspect ratio and the pixels in the other one to make sure that we have the highest quality available from the image and so we can go back. That's, a, that's the beauty of that. So this time we're gonna actually size it so we can work in this, this composition. So I'm gonna go to composition, composition settings, and now we're gonna change these settings. So now I'm gonna go down to HDTV 1080 24 click OK, and you'll see that the composition changed size, but the footage didn't. Uh, and this is great because it's proving to you that, hey, look, the size is actually bigger than what the comp is. So the footage itself, if I click on this, you'll see that we have little handles here, of course. Now, if we go over to our pre-comp, and I click the same thing, see it's blue versus whatever this is, tan. Now, these are these little handles, or what I like to call chiclets. Um, you can grab on them, and you can resize stuff, and it will distort. But just like in Photoshop, if you hold Shift, it will maintain the aspect ratio and the size. So you can actually size it to your window. Another way of doing this, and I'm going to undo this real quick. Another way of doing this is going down to your timeline and opening up your footage by clicking on the little, the little uh, arrows here and going to Scale. Um, I can click on scale and see, I will now hit, uh, was it 35.8, I think is what it was. Nope, it's not that, hold on. It is 38.5. What, what happened? I'm confused now, whoa. Something happened here, okay. So let's, let's just resize and see what happened, shift. Oh, it's 53.8. Of course, of course it's 53.8. My dyslexia kicked in. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so our footage is resized. And uh, what I can do now is I could uh, I could key it. So I can go up here to my effects and, of course, select that. Do that nonsense. Or I could grab my tools and, you know, of course, roto. Make bounding boxes. Make masks. Regardless. Um, work in this particular composition, make multiple pre-comps from this particular composition. So the workflow would be like, let's say I wanted to key this, I key it first, or I roto it first, or I track it first, and then I pre-comp that, write what that is, and then put the number, like what level that is, like 002 or 003. Um, and then from that point on, you'll pretty much, uh, you pretty much have a proper workflow and be able to work with others and they'll be able to open up your compositions and you'll be able to work together. Um, now, if I wanted to deliver this, uh, if I wanted to deliver this to the editor, there's something you should be aware of as well. Um, my main composition, I'm gonna export. So I'm gonna go to Composition, Make Movie or Apple M. And then in your render queue, you could select like, uh, like Render Settings, Best settings is important because you want to make sure you are at the best quality. Resolution is full. Your size is 1920 by 1080, um, and your frame rate is proper. Now, this one here is where you can customize the frame rate. You click on here, you can put like 12 frames per set per second, or 10 frames per second, or whatever you want. But we're going to just use the comps frame rate. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to loss list down here. Click the output module loss list, and here is very important because you can change your output formats. Um, right now, it's set to QuickTime, but you can export any kind of sequence, like JPEG sequence, or PNG, or TIFF, or Targa. Now, a funny thing that you should probably know about is uh, when you're doing specific, like, alpha channels and stuff, you've keyed something, you want to give somebody a file with an alpha channel, we can export, actually, QuickTime movies, and then in a format, you can do PNG sequences, or you can just straight up export PNG sequences and have your alpha, alpha channel go with that. And it's, uh, 
it's a really kind of handy thing to know. Uh, your video output, of course, is RGB. There's uh, this alpha, RGB plus alpha. That works with your doing the PNG. Of course, it will change to a million plus once you've done that, but we're not doing that. We're gonna go to video output module and go to format options. And animation is its is the default. You don't wanna export as an animation. It may sound like that's the greatest thing to export. The file size is enormous, gimongous. It's, it's just large, it's scary, scary large. The same thing is true if you go down here and you go to none. These are non-compressed or at the least compressed um, export that you could possibly do. Uh, we're not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna actually export at Apple ProRes 422HQ. This is the industry standard right now, currently in Hollywood that everybody likes to use. Uh, there's also XD Cam down here that people like to use as well. But actually, the Pro, Apple ProRes 4444 is probably the ultimate best codec that you could possibly use right now for exporting things, uh, or you could export JPEG sequences, but you're not gonna edit in JPEG sequences. And the, the reason is this, uh, this maintains your color the most accurately, 4444, but 4222 or 422 HQ is uh, probably the truest that you wanna work with um, and will give you the best results. We're gonna click here. And I can give you guys a rundown about that stuff when I do an editor editorial tutorial. But uh, now we got the output module settings. Now I'm gonna hit okay. By the way, you can resize things, crop things, and add um, your audio. You can export with your audio, but we're not gonna do that. Now I'm gonna hit okay. And then my output module, of course I wanna change the name of this. And I already named it Fly Guy. I already did one of these. But I'm gonna just click on that so it's writing over top of it. And then I hit replace because I had that in there. And then now what I can do is I can just hit render. And what this will do is this will export my footage. And uh, pretty much, I mean, we can, uh, we can rock uh, coffee or something and you get a whole bunch of these going and you don't have to do much. You just sit back and let these things render. Now, when you're working in a studio, one of the biggest mistakes that I make all the time is I'll work on something and then instead of like leaving it and coming back to it later for a render, I will try, I will render it and go on a break. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes I make. Um, and it's a big mistake a lot of us make because, uh, you know, we want to, we want to see what we've worked on, but what you should be doing and it's something to get in the habit of. And, and I try to do this now. I mean, I've learned my mistakes. I try to do this now. You only render, your only actual render that you're going to do your final output happens or your preview outputs are going to happen at your lunch break or whoops hey i heard the little chime it, it's going to happen at your lunch break or it's going to happen when you how do i say it? when you go and you're you're you know your end of the day it's it's five or six o'clock or seven o'clock or twelve o'clock at night <clears throat> and you're going to hit render and then you have a render queue with like 20 of these suckers in there. And when you come back in the morning, it should be done unless it's one of those gnarly ones that needs to be rendered over the weekend. But um, yeah, for the most part, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not using uh, up your work time for a coffee break and pissing everybody off. Don't do that. It's not good. Believe me, I, I've done it and it's, it's, not, it's not appropriate. So, um, and the other thing too is like, it looks bad when you're sitting there waiting for a render and everybody else is like chugging away and rotoing and stuff. So um, now one thing I should make you aware of is when you're working with this footage, you also want to uh, preview it before you export it a lot of times. And I like to hit the zero button on my numeric pad, which does a RAM preview, but you can also go over here to your preview window in the upper right-hand corner and hit a preview and it will ramp up for you. And see that it's playing ahead of time. And if I just hit zero again, there we go. I get a little little preview going on. All right, now let's check out what I exported. I'm gonna go down to my finder and I'm gonna click on here. And I think it's on my desktop. There we go. And let's, there we go. And here he is flying away. So this is basically your basic workflow for stop motion animation and After Effects um, importation. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope I didn't babble too much because I kind of do that every once in a while when I just talking into a microphone. So for the most part, uh, this has been a wonderful and invigorating experience, and I hope to see you in the future. Um, I'm exaggerating, but it was fun, and uh, we'll see you soon.